Bjorn Rebney founded the Bellator MMA League in 2008. Since then, it's grown into the number two MMA league with fans all over the world. I talked with him about Bellator's upcoming pay-per-view fight and his journey. What would you say are the top three things that have driven the growth of Bellator? Well, I think first and foremost, great fights, great content, because that fuels the machine. Um, equal to that is a distribution platform. The launch on Spike TV in January of 2013 was enormous for this brand. 100 million homes per week and the support of the network who really built out mixed martial arts to the general market and advertiser support. You look at the Dave & Busters, the Millers, the Monster Energy Drinks, the list goes on, Victory Motorcycles, on and on, who have supported this brand and activated with the brand, given it connect and touch points with consumers. So those have been driving this brand in a, in a, at an exponential growth curve over the last year and a half, two years. And if you look at UFC, Dana White and Lorenzo Fortita, they play different roles. Dana is more the cheerleader and Lorenzo drives the business. You do both. I you, do both, You yeah. do a lot of these business development deals. Yeah, and that's where my expertise comes from. I mean, look, I, I'm blessed. I've got an amazing team around me, people who operate different areas of this business in a seamless fashion, I think, at, at an elite level in terms of sports. So that gives me an advantage to be able to step out and work on international distribution to 140 plus countries around the world and large scale integrated sponsorship alliances and expanding the brand in areas where you not, might not be thinking about today, but set the table for 12, 24, 36 months from now. That's where I hope my expertise comes into play for this company. And your expertise is as a lawyer, but also you had a strong tie to boxing because you came out of that. Tell yeah. me about uh, how you're using your boxing background to build up this league. You know what it is, is it's about understanding the drivers in the industry. In MMA, there have been two success stories, the UFC and Bellator. UFC obviously aligned, aligned with Fox and we're aligned with Viacom. They own a majority stake in the company and we're on Spike TV. But there have been an epic number of failures and it's because those failures, those businesses didn't understand the drivers that take you from a position of, of a negative cash, cash flow to a positive cash flow business. And that's what about, are they? What well, are the things those are an incredible TV distribution alliance like we have with Spike TV, great support from the network, advertiser support huge large-scale international distribution now in 140 countries around the world uh, merchandising licensing plays also venue relationships and understanding how to take fighters from an infancy point in their career and build them into superstars that have a crossover Q score where general market consumers and hardcore MMA fans alike will tune in to watch them fight okay so from a market share perspective you are number we're number two rapidly gaining on number one so you really believe that you could be bigger than UFC? I, I, look, what I would say is this. I never got into this to be number two. I firmly believe that our, mark, that our business plan, our format, our model, real sports competition, a tournament format just like we have in the NBA, Major League Baseball, and the NFL, is the future of combat sports. The UFC follows a model called matchmaking where people sit behind a desk and decide who fights who for what and when. I don't think that bears itself out for long-term viability in the sports mm -hmm. world. You've seen boxing fall off very dramatically mm -hmm. in terms of its tie into cable networks, its pay-per-view buy rates and the like. So I like our chances. We're five years in yeah. and we're beating the UFC head-to-head -head consistently, our spike ratings versus their FS1 ratings. And that's the primary driver of the ship. Okay. So we're five years in, they're 20 plus years in. I like our chances in terms of five years from now. And what's fabulous is now you're doing your first pay-per-view fight with Rampage Jackson coming up here, is that? Yeah, it's a monster. It is a must-see. I could not be happier with the card that we have created for this pay-per-view. Rampage Jackson is fighting King Mo Lawal in a much-anticipated three years in the making fight that just got so much on the line in terms of both of these fighters' legacy and what they're doing in MMA, where they stand 10 years, 20 years down the road. We got Tito Ortiz fighting Alexander Slomenko in a crazy fight that'll be done at 205 pounds. So we have an incredible card and that's the essence of it. Consumers and fans of MMA like me, they wanna buy a card that's a must see, something you can't miss. And that's what we've got on May 17th on pay-per-view. Is there any nervousness that you kind of have within you when you go into your first pay-per-view pay fight? Do you ever fear like, oh wow, the numbers won't be as good as we anticipated and how do you plan against that? We, we have, I have, I do 25 shows per year and I feel that nervousness going into every single show. Hmm. Will we have the right attendance? Are, are all of the benchmarks gonna work in the format and is the show gonna get produced beautifully? Uh, are the features going to play with consumers? Are the fights going to match up? So there's nervousness in every single thing we do. The UFC is a pay-per-view model. 
they do a pay-per-view once every two to three weeks whether they've got a great card or they don't have a great card. And the result of that, you've seen ever decreasing buy rates for their pay-per-view product. Mm. We do two or three of these a year. They're epic big events, but the core of our business is Spike TV and that million plus with our plus threes that are watching every single week on Friday nights at nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So that's really what fuels this business. That's really what takes this business to the next evolution in our development. And the pay-per-views are going to be awesome. There are going to be some huge pay-per-view events two to three times a year, but we're never going to be a company that does pay-per-view as our main fueling mechanism for the business. You're never going to oversaturate the market with pay-per-view fights that maybe wouldn't draw as much. You can't. You've got, from my perspective, if you're going to turn to consumers and say, hey, spend 39 or 45 or $49 with me for a night, it better be a must see night it better be unbelievable fights can't miss type of stuff and that's what we've got on this pay-per-view may 17th but that's the time when you'll see us doing pay-per-views when i talk to ufc fans a lot of them are just rabid about mma in general and people are excited about not just ufc but bellator do you feel that you benefit uh from the success of ufc even though they're your biggest competitor well and they benefit from you uh, yeah Unlike the comments of the leadership of the UFC, I think that when they do well, it benefits us. And we, we do well, it benefits them as well. When you've got a million plus people watching Spike TV on a Friday night at nine, watching our shows, it's helping expand the breadth of the populace that watches MMA, that embraces MMA, that buys the products that the advertisers are advertising on our show. And the same holds true for them. So if they do well, as shocking as it may sound, I applaud them doing well because what it says to me is a larger segment of the, mo of, of, the, of the market is actually interested in this sport, engaged in it, will buy the products, yeah. support the advertisers. That's a win-win. I mean, there, I know that there's a lot of differentiation between the two leagues, but do you find that there are people that are fans of both and how oh, big yeah. of the population, what percentage of the population is that? Boy, I don't know the exact population percentage numbers, but you do see the crossover now because with Rampage fighting for us now and he used to fight for the UFC and he's regained that level of greatness, that prestige, that mystique that's followed Rampage around with King Mo here. People who used to watch the UFC watch us. People who watch us sometimes watch the UFC. So there's absolutely that crossover. Mm -hmm. with, with the expansion of this brand over the last five years, Fans are looking at it and saying, I just want to see incredible fights. Mm -hmm. I just want to see the best in the world compete on a huge stage, and that's what we've got at Bellator. And, you know, since you come from the boxing world, I'll ask you about this. It seems that boxing, on the other hand, is in a crisis because they don't have as many charismatic figures right. uh, as you do in MMA. Right. Uh, Floyd Mayweather and th this whole I speculation about the possibility of a Manny Pacquiao fight, that's going to be over in two or three years. Are you glad that you left boxing? I am. It, it, you know, I mean, look, the, the, the Manny Pacquiao fight against Floyd, I think we all know, was something that should happen 36 months ago when they were both on an upward trajectory, when they were both on, you know, undefeated, one loss, and absolutely looked like world beaters. The time for that mega event has passed. And boxing is too reliant upon one or two mega events to fuel the machine on a consistent and reoccurring basis. We've got incredible advertiser support for this. Spike is doing extremely well. We're doing extremely well. People are excited about it. I just talked to our sales team at Spike, and they're nearly sold out of inventory for the entire year. That's a spectacular point and place to be in in terms of the evolution of a brand and then the support you're getting from consumers and advertisers, which are tied like this. So, you know, it, it is a, it's a great sport. It attracts a young male demographic that's socioeconomically impressed. Boxing just doesn't do that. You and I are fans, yeah. but the primary demographic that's watching boxing isn't driving advertiser support. It's not driving cable ratings, and that in tune lessens the excitement about big pay-per-views. Right, and let's look at some of your sponsors here. Miller Lite, Dave & Buster's, Victory Motorcycles, Everlast, Monster Energy, Attack Poker, Bamboo Nutra. So you, you've got these kind of edgy companies that are, are getting behind you. It's not necessarily... You're not going to see an MMA fighter on a box of cornflakes, or are you? And you might. You absolutely <laughs> might. I, I, I would not be. I would not want to say that you would not see a, an MMA superstar on a box of cornflakes. Okay. We got Rampage doing spectacular stuff in reality TV with Spike. That's going to launch in short order. That's great television. There are these great characters who cross over, who were NCAA champions and Olympians and the like. Great, great personalities. Well, that really is really 
phenomenal that a lot of these guys are legitimate athletes from college yeah. that whereas wrestlers didn't really have anywhere to go after college or after the Olympics now they can go into MMA which is different than WWE oh yeah because they are they look athletic but they're not necessarily athletes well I would say this the wrestlers are no questions asked athletes but and they are doing very dangerous things but it's scripted mm -hmm. and it's planned it's theatrical and it is fun to watch but it's not real sports competition they're real athletes but it's not real sports competition mm -hmm. mma is as real as it gets there is no sport that is more real than mixed martial and arts. it's not scripted but you do have the rivalries you have huge rivalries so what's next for bellator and what's next for you because as you follow your journey uh you had this vision and this dream uh and you really made it reality i mean you've, and it continues to grow so what's next well, continue 18 hour days, seven days a week, 365 days a year is to build this brand. Continue to expand into more foreign markets. 140 markets is nice, but there are a lot more markets out there in the world that we could be developing this brand in. Start to expand the live event experience from the domestic United States into foreign territories like South America, where we have this huge new alliance with Fox Sports Network that transcends Central America, South America, and Mexico. Move into Eastern Europe with some of our partners there and just continue to build out stars. Create the next Michael. Chandler, the next mm. Eddie Alvarez, the next Quentin Rampage Jackson, or King Mo, and on and on. Keep building out those personalities. What, what is uh, the second biggest market to North America for Bellator? Oh, South America. South, South and America. Central America. Yeah, okay. Latin America is an enormous market for mixed martial arts. The ratings that we're doing right now with our partners at Fox throughout Central America, South America, and Mexico are huge ratings. That is a spectacular marketplace for us, and we're going to soon transition into that marketplace doing live events. And you've seen a strong Latino base for boxing. Oh, huge. And Latino consumers over index and pay-per-view buy rates. The attachment to combat sports is there from a very, very young age. So it's a spectacular market for us to be in, and we've got an enormous partner down there. All the right. All the way from Chicago, gone worldwide <laughs> now. It's really good to see you, Bjorn. It's good to see you. Congratulations with Bellator. And it's, what, May 17th? It's a big fight. May 17th, live on pay-per-view. And you and I have got to do this more frequently than once every two years. All right, buddy. Thank okay. you. And with Bjorn Rebney, I'm Lee Hawkins. We'll see you next time.